বিভিন্ন ধরনের অত্যাচার হতো ওখানে আমি যখন ওই কাজ করব না বলতাম দে উড টর্চার মি ইন ভেরিয়াস ওয়েজ হোয়েন আই রিফিউজ টু ওয়ার্ক দে উড থ্রাশ মি দি ওনারস অফ দ্য ব্রথেল উড স্টপ देयर সিগারেটস ইন মাই হ্যান্ড দে উড ব্রেক বিয়ার বটলস এন্ড হিট মি উইথ देम সেটাবাড়িও আমাকে মেরেছিল পায়ে ভেঙে পায়ে মারধর করেছিল প্রচুর Every 8 minutes a child goes missing in India. Often they are victims of trafficking, unwillingly pushed into sex work. Namaste. My name is Rohima Khan and I am a trafficking survivor. This is Rohima's story. and the story of many like her the story of their fall and their rise this is the alarming data on the number of girls who have gone missing in the indian state of west bengal 32% of these girls are from the two districts in the sundarbans delta Due to the floods, we didn't have any money. The madrasa was closed, so I had gone to my relative's house to study. From there, a distant relative invited me to their place. She lured me and offered me a biscuit, consuming which I was so drowsy that I couldn't understand anything. When I woke up, I was on a train. I was crying and asking her where she was taking me. She asked me to shut up and come along wherever she was taking me to. She would beat me. Rehmat was just 10 when she was trafficked by a distant relative. She was kept in a brothel in Delhi for almost 2 months. They would keep me in a room where many men would visit. They would pull my clothes, abuse me or hit me if I cried. they would strip my clothes and touch me everywhere of the 16 million women trafficked in india 51% are minors at the time of trafficking just like rehmat and rohima school theke bari fichila i was coming back from school crossing the basanti bridge to visit my relative in sonakhali my three traffickers were standing there in a red car When I was passing by them, they covered my mouth and put me in the car. May I have your attention, please? I didn't know where they took me because I'd lost consciousness. While I was coming in and out of my senses, I saw glimpses of the area around. And I could tell that I was at a railway station. That is the only thing I could understand at that point. that i was at the sonarpur station i tried to scream but the car windows were tinted black when i regained consciousness i saw that i was at another train station i was so drowsy that i could not speak but i understood that i was at pune station a nepali woman who covered her face arrived and they handed me over to her this woman took me to the brothel when we reached the brothel they locked me in a room and as far as i can remember i remained locked up for quite a few hours later i also discovered that there were many other women besides me over there tar pore After three, four days of being locked and constantly crying, the women there told me that I was sold here and that I must do sex work. इकोरो हाँ एक ट्यूब की ना ना हाथे मेहंदी बता बेटे ना चाइना चाइना मेहंदी की नहीं तो कौन दो रहे हैं दर्द They would hit me with sticks and rods. They would hit me whenever I didn't want to work or wanted to go home. Sometimes roti, 
rice, sometimes puffed rice. Yes, three times, but in small amounts. I was barely 13 years old when I started entertaining customers. I was very young back then. The first time, well, what should I say? The first time was very painful. It was the first time in my life. Whenever I refused to work, they would drug me with drowsy meds. And this happened several times when they would force me to consume alcohol if I refused to work. There have been even times when they tied my hands and legs and asked the customer to just go about their business. The senior sex workers there would beat me up too, with sticks and shoes and whatever they could find. They would torture me in all kinds of ways. I was very young back then, so they would give me steroids to make me look more mature. The husbands of the female owners would first try their hands on the new women before giving us to customers. We had around 20 to 30 customers in a day. This would start at 6 in the morning and go on till 2 or 3 at night. For a long time. No, two hours. Yeah. From around 9, 10 a.m., they would stay till Azan time. After that, they would leave. Every single day that I was there, I would think that one day or another, I will escape. I was always trying to escape from there. During the raids, I would see that many parents would come. And I would wish that someday, mine would come too. Whenever there was a raid, they would hide me inside a washroom filled with exposed electric wires. I was hidden there for over three hours. If I would have died from an electric shock, no one would have even come to see me. They would even hide two, three of us in water tankers so that no one would notice. There were walls with photos hanging on them. But behind these walls, there were secret tunnels where you could hide up to 20 girls and no one could find them. This is Gorenbo's Gram Bikas Kendra, a Sundarban-based NGO. It is with their help that Rohema and Rehmat could make it out of the brothels. Trafficking happens because there are traffickers. There are so many places which are poverty-stricken, but then there's no trafficking there because there are no traffickers. Climate change and natural disasters are a huge issue here. Like we have had two super cyclones during the COVID period, Amphan and Yas, Bulbul before that. Every time a cyclone hits, the people here lose their kacha homes and livelihood. That's when traffickers lure the women in the name of a good job or marriage. Basically, the traffickers prey on the needs of the families, and that's how they operate. Despite being scared, Rohima and Rehmat risked it all, at every given opportunity to escape from the brothels. Six years passed by, after which I met a customer. I told him that I wanted to escape from there. It was with his help that I escaped, and he dropped me all the way home. They were outside when I made an excuse to go to the bathroom and jumped the fence to escape. I met a woman on the other side whom I confided in and was crying out loud. She put me in touch with my family and then she helped me come back home.
When I escaped, I was very scared. What if they find me and take me back there again? When the train finally reached Howrah, I felt safe and free. I hadn't been that happy in the past six years. But for every Rehmat and Rohima, there are hundreds of others who are never found. Three years ago, Jehalat Mola's 17 year old daughter, Nirupa Mola, went missing. To date, there's no trace of her. I can't tell you what I am going through. I have nothing left in my body. I worry so much that I don't eat. She had gone to Delhi to work as domestic help. From there, she went missing. The person whose house she used to work at called me and said that my daughter has left. Since then, I have not found her. The trafficker bribed the police and suppressed the case. Rohima and Rehmat are back home. But is it the home they had yearned for? They return to a village reluctant to accept them. The villagers would say all kinds of things. The amount of stigma they would give me previously has definitely gone down now. She's come from a bad place. She was at a bad place, which means she will spoil the girls here too or traffic them. Counselors who helped them escape worked with the villagers. Over time, mindsets and attitudes changed. Gradually, ostracization made way for acceptance. Now that I'm associated with the NGO, people fear me. Previously, those who stigmatized me now come to me for help if they are faced with a similar situation. Once a girl has been rescued, the first thing that we need to do is build trust with her. We must understand her situation, her family background, what she has been through and her current mental state. So we have built a sixth sense to understand her, whereby it isn't just the verbal but also the body language that we gauge. I was stigmatized and anxious. I thought that I made a huge mistake by coming back here. My family also hadn't accepted me initially. I would think that I made a huge mistake by coming back here and that if I died, no one would care. Angry, I tried to take my own life. Rohima's counselling involved preventing her from overthinking. Counsellors would talk to her about things she loved, things like movies. With utensils. With Rehmat, who's just 10, it's extremely tough to understand her mental state. When we rescued a 10-year-old kid, she could not communicate the physical and the mental torture that she was subjected to. So we asked her what she liked to do. She said that she likes to draw. We let her draw and used her drawings to initiate the counselling process. It's a slow process of unravelling. I am better now because now I am a leader. But Rohima soon realized that the battle for justice, punishment for her trafficker, was not going to be easy. My traffickers would get my father drunk and ask him to convince me to withdraw my case. One day I dragged all of them to the GGBK office. The director there spoke to them and since then they haven't asked us to withdraw the case. <laughs> Rohima's incident happened in 2012. Uh, she was a minor back then. The investigating officer did not arrest any of the accused. They were arrested a long time after she was rescued. They were not arrested because the accused had political connections. Since the perpetrators are from the same village, often relatives, there's always intense pressure on the survivors to withdraw the case. 
ভীষণ একটা অসুবিধা ফেস করে কিং অফ দা ভিকটিমস ফেস এ লট অফ ট্রাবল when they try to lodge a complaint the fir is not registered properly they don't know what details are to be added to the fir no one guides them for that most cases are shunned as a case of eloping in many cases there is no medical examination conducted for the victim who have been raped shekhte tader medical examination korache stigma fear mistrust of the legal procedure and poverty This is what pushes many survivors back to the trade again. But many of the survivors fight on. Forming self-help groups like Bandhan Mukti which literally means free from shackles. Amar shopno ami je byabsha ta korte I want to restart the business that I had put on hold so that I can stand on my feet and take care of my children. Bachchader o bhobishyot hote chai. আমার স্বপ্ন আই ওয়ান্ট টু ওপেন আ শপ অ্যান্ড স্ট্যান্ড অন মাই ওন ফিট তো আমার স্বপ্ন আই ওয়ান্ট মাই ট্রাফিক আর টু বি ব্রট টু জাস্টিস অ্যান্ড দ্যাট উড মেক মি হ্যাপি আই রান আ স্টেশনারি জুয়েলারি বিজনেস টুডে অ্যান্ড আই ট্রাভেল ফ্রম উইলেজ টু উইলেজ টু সেল দিস গুডস ইট ইজ আ লট অফ এফার্ট বিকজ আই হ্যাভ টু ওয়ার্ক ফ্রম মাই এজ অ্যাট স্ট্রেচ বাট আই ডু ড্রিম দ্যাট ওয়ান ডে আই ক্যান ওপেন আ শপ ইন মাই ওন উইলেজ অ্যান্ড স্ট্যান্ড অন মাই ওন ফিট I want the shop to be in my name and I want to run it myself. <laughs>